Shalom, this is Nacham Melech Ben Yaakov of Karite Insights and this is part two of what I'll call uh, advice and the second thing that I want to speak about is this idea of timing. Uh, timing, I've come to understand in my life, really comes from the hand of Yehovah. There's something about uh, when certain events come together in a certain way that is almost providential that, uh, that cannot be explained by just uh, natural forces but can only be explained by some kind of, some kind of uh, universal timing that is uh, at the end of the day uh, run by the hand of Yehovah. I'll give an example. I was speaking uh, again with my friend Yona and we were talking about uh, the election, the inauguration of Donald Trump which occurred yesterday and I happen to be a huge, huge fan of Donald Trump and uh, I see his uh, rise to power as providential. I see, his, I see it as Yehovah basically chose him and led him by the hand to be the, the current leader of uh, the country known as the United States of America. And uh, I've given Yona the example, what if, what if Donald Trump, what if the timing was off? Let's say Donald Trump had been 70 years old and reached his current level of understanding of the world or a current level of maturity 20 years ago. Would the world have been ready for him? Would the United States of America have been ready for him? Or let's say he was 50 years old now and in 20 years from now he would be 70 years old, okay? Would that be now too late <coughs> for, uh, for what he has to offer? There seems to be somehow or another a certain divine timing, almost timed by the universe, for this man to come together with the country as it is at this state for whatever purpose uh, God has in mind for the country and for, uh, and for Donald Trump. Okay, now I just give the, the uh, Donald Trump as an example, but we see this again and again and again throughout our lives. We can see a certain kind of serendipity, a certain kind of divine timing, a certain kind of universal time clock in our own lives where certain things happen in a certain way that just seemed to be at the right time. We met a certain person or a certain thing happened to us. Maybe we didn't even realize it at the time and then maybe many years later we realized how fortuitous uh, the timing between that particular event and the particular state of that we were in at that time in our in our lives was okay so a couple more things I'd like to say about this okay uh, also with Yonah I was speaking about the current state of Israel and Yonah had told me the story which many people know which I've known before that in 1967 after the uh, IDF conquered the old city of Jerusalem uh, the the uh, the the Mufti of Jerusalem, or whoever it was, one of the representatives, ordered, gave, gave the, uh, the key to the Temple Mount to Moshe Dayan, and then Moshe Dayan returned it and said, you know, you hold on to it. And ever since then, the Temple Mount has, has remained in, in Muslim control. And Yona was lamenting the fact, what a horrible thing, um, that this happened, and, and, uh, and I agree with him. It is, it is a horrible thing, but I also raise the point, what if Israel had taken possession of the key of the Temple Mount at that time. Would they really have known what to do with the Temple Mount? There would have been so much disagreement, there would have been so much argument. The Pharisees slash rabbis might have gotten in control of the Temple Mount, or the Chelonim slash Hellenist Westernists, Westerners, uh, Western-aligned uh, Israelis might have gotten control of the Temple Mount. It seems that the, the nation of Israel was at that point not ripe. It was a horrible thing that they, we did not take possession of the Temple Mount, but it, but it seems that the nation of Israel at that point was not ripe and they had to go through more trials and tribulations and are still going through those trials and tribulations to come to some kind of point, some kind of realization, some kind of um, uh, uh, maturity whereby they will be ready to receive the keys uh, to that Temple Mount. Of course, as a side note, I believe that, of course, the Temple Mount should only be in the hands of someone who follows Pshat Torah or Charism or scriptural, Scripturalism or whatever you want to call it. And, of course, I believe that there should at that time hopefully be prophecy and, and some kind of connection, direct connection back with Yehovah so we know exactly what should be built and how it should be built and what should happen in the Temple once it's built. But that's almost an aside point. The point is that the nation of Israel, when it is ready, the timing will come and the right event will come, the state of the nation of Israel, and the right event will come at the perfect timing uh, to make it happen in a way that is very providential, which, which seems almost as if it's coming from something outside of space and time, that it is the hand of, of Yehovah. Another note that I want to add regarding this issue is the idea of what I would call pregnancy, okay? The idea, uh, and let me just give a little background on, uh, about this. 
uh, my friend Yona was saying to me, well, it just seems things are going so slow, nothing's changing, and you know, the state of Israel is never going to reach the point where we take possession of the, of the Temple Mount, things are never going to change, we're never going to have a true Karaite slash Pshat Torah based government, or any Torah government for that matter, although that is the only true Torah government in my opinion. Um, you know, maybe it's going to happen in 200 years, and 300 years, and 1,000 years, who knows, maybe even never. And I have these thoughts all the time, I have these doubts all the time, as an, as an honest person, it would be not genuine to say that I don't have these doubts, that maybe this is all just a hoax, maybe this is never going to happen, maybe this is just the pipe dreams of a nation from thousands of years ago. But then I think of the idea of what I, what I call pregnancy, okay? A, a pregnancy lasts for nine months, and then the birth happens very quickly, it happens in a day. There seems to be a build-up to an event that takes a long time, that is very painful, that is very frustrating, that seems like it's going to never end, and then suddenly it ends and the event happens, everything changes uh, in a very short period of time. There's the build-up and then there's the release. The example I would give is kind of blowing up a balloon, okay? You blow up a balloon and blow it up and blow it up and blow it up and it just becomes more and more and more tense and it seems like it's just going to blow up forever, then all of a sudden, pop, in a second the whole thing changes, okay? And that's the way the world seems to work. There's a build-up to an event, and then the event, the resulting event, takes place in, uh, in, in, in a very short amount of time. So that gives us hope that even though the, the, the situation seems bleak and endless in Israel, that everything can change in a moment when the timing's right. When the time is right, Yehovah will connect the right person or the right people with the right events, with the right time, and will all come together, and things will suddenly change in a second. Uh, the final thing that I'd like to say about this is to relate back to Psalms and something that King David in his Psalms constantly speaks about and obsesses about and that's the, the way of the, of the evil person and the way of the righteous person. Okay, we look at the world and we see the evil people thriving. We see the evil people on top. We see the evil people flourishing. And we may think there's no God, there's no justice. How long can this go on? Is nothing ever going to change? But many times in Psalms, David says, that uh, this will all change suddenly. The evil person will suddenly disappear. You will look at the place of his dwelling and he will be there no more. You will, you will suddenly see that he is gone. And that goes back to the same idea of a pregnancy and then a birth. The pregnancy takes a long time, everything builds up, and then the birth or the actual resulting event happens in a burst, okay? This will happen with the evil people, this will happen with the good people. The evil people may look like they're flourishing, may look like they're successful, but in a second they'll be gone. You'll go to their place and, and you'll, you'll say, where are they? They're not here anymore because Yehovah has destroyed them. They've reached the, the tipping point or they've reached the, 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 the top of the cup and their evil is overflown and Yehovah has now cut them down after giving them a long chance to repent. The same with good people. It may look that they have, like they have very difficult lives. There's no end in sight. There's no end. Uh, there's no light at the end of the tunnel and they, they they're constantly uh, seem to be struggling and they constantly have all these trials and tribulations in life. But the same thing can happen just as it happened with the evil people. The same thing can happen with the good people. In a second, their fate can turn around and they can they can have the, the blessings of Yehovah uh, pour down upon them and they can have their entire lives change in an instant and, and then they can realize that all of the all of the pain and suffering and the trials and tribulations were lead up to the final reward that Yehovah wanted to give to them for their goodness. He wanted to refine them. He wanted to make them more mature. He wanted to to uh, put them through the the kur habarzel, the 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 uh, the refining furnace, uh, the refining furnace of smelting. Okay, and this is the way the world works. So relating back to Israel, even though the situation, what? I just want to say that added to that, Hillary and Bill Clinton look like they're half dead. I mean, they look like they're in horrible health, plus they just lost, you know, their race to the White House, so that's kind of a symbol of this too. Absolutely, there you go. Both of them look like they're about to die or something, it's nuts. Absolutely, evil people who for a long time were successful, and just as they were about to reach the pinnacle, you know, God cut them down and took this, this guy Trump, who seemed like a, you know, everyone wrote him off and he seemed like a joke. And in a second, he, came, he became leadership. This is exactly the kind of thing that I'm talking about. So it will be the same with Israel. It seems like a, a long road. It seems like there's no light at the end of the tunnel. We wonder where is Yehovah? Why is he not intervening? Why is he not interfering? But there will come a time where suddenly everything will come together. The evil people will be cut off. And the blessings and the gifts of Yehovah will pour down upon all the righteous people who have been loyal to him throughout all these years, who have endured all the trials and tribulations, who will all realize that this was for a reason to make us... Uh, better people to make us more mature, to make us more sensitive and more wise people so that we could actually be ready to accept 
the blessings and the gifts of Yehovah because we will look back and realize that if we had accepted them earlier, we would not have been able to. Just like if Donald Trump had run for president 20 years ago, it would have been too early. If Donald Trump had run for president 20 years from now, it would have been too late. The timing of the universe is the timing of Yehovah. There are, everything is, is in some kind of divine equation that we can't always have access to, but everything at one point, in one way or another, will become clear. With that message of hope and advice, uh, this has been Chacham Melech Ben Yaakov of Karite Insights, uh, wishing you uh, great blessings from Yehovah.